we will talk about giving speeches and oral presentations. In these two lectures, we will learn to categorize speeches and presentations according to their purpose, analyze the audience for speeches and presentations, and we will discuss the steps required in planning a speech or presentation. Let's see what you would need. You would need to define your purpose, analyze your audience, and develop a plan for presenting your points. Let's talk first about defining your purpose. Speeches and presentations can be categorized according to their purpose, much as interviews and meetings. The purpose helps you determine a content and style. It also affects the amount of audience participation that occurs. When you're trying to motivate or entertain your audience, you generally do most of the talking. During your speech, the audience then plays an essentially passive role. They listen to your remarks, but they provide very little input in the form of comments or questions. So therefore, then you control the content of the message. On the other hand, when your purpose is to provide information or analyze a situation, you and the audience generally interact somewhat. De uh, the, the degree will vary, but there will be some interaction. Basically, a group of people then meet to hear the oral equivalent of a written report. Then the audience members offer comments or ask questions. The most interaction occurs when your purpose is to persuade people to take particular action or collaborate with them in solving a problem or reaching a solution. Now, based on this purpose, you generally begin by providing facts and figures that, you, that will increase your audience's understanding of the subjects. Uh, you might also offer arguments in defense of certain conclusions or recommendations. In addition, you invite the audience members to participate by expressing their needs, suggesting solutions, and formulating recommendations and conclusions. Because persuasive and collaborative presentations involve so much audience interaction, you can have relatively little control of them. And because you need to be flexible enough to adjust to new input and unexpected reactions, you cannot stick to a pre-written script. Now, a speech or presentation can often accomplish several of these purposes simultaneously. Zaruri nahi hai ki ek speech ya ek presentation jo hai wo ek hi purpose accomplish kare. Bahut baar ye bhi hota hai ki speech ya presentation ek se zyada maksad accomplish kar rahi hoti hai ek hi baari mein. Once you have defined your purpose, you will be analyzing your audience, which is another basic element of your speech or presentation. Now, this analysis of the audience is particularly important because you will be gearing the style and content of your speech to your audience's needs and interests. First, you will consider the size and composition of the audience. You can easily involve audience members in your presentation when you speak to a relatively small group. With more than uh, 12 people, it gets difficult to manage that involvement and it gets difficult to manage the give and take that's essential in uh, building a consensus. So then your uh, approach may be more towards telling than asking because obviously if it's a large group of people, then you cannot listen to everybody and uh, give them information simultaneously. So then it will be more one way. A homogenous group, a group that is very similar in their knowledge will benefit from a focused speech or presentation. A diverse group, on the other hand, requires a more generalized approach because their interests will be diverse, their knowledge level, knowledge bases will be diverse. Therefore, you will have to take a more general approach to the information that you give out. And then you will use less technical jargon and present a broader picture. Zahir hai, agar ek group hai jis mein sab log ek hi level ke hain, unki knowledge ek jitni hai, technical knowledge ek jitni hai, to phir aap ki jo presentation hogi, wo zyada focused hogi. Lekin agar aapke group mein aise log hain, jinki knowledge ek dousre se bahut mukhtalif hai, to phir aapki jo presentation hai, wo shayad kam technical ho aur zyada general ho. Another important factor uh, is your audience's likely reaction to your speech or presentation. So, jahan aapne dekhna hai ki aapke audience mein kitne log hain unki knowledge base kitni hai aapne ye bhi khayal karna hai ki unka reaction kya hoga aapke material ke sath uh, you need to decide whether your audience will be hostile receptive or indifferent to your point of view try to learn as much as possible about their level of understanding how much do they already know about your subject 
depending on that you will be able to determine what you need to include in your presentation. Take a cold hard look at their relationship with you. Think do they already know you? Do they respect your judgment? The answers to these questions will help you decide on the best way to go about planning your speech. Then you come to planning your speech or presentation. Planning an oral message is similar to writing a, a written message. It's the planning phases are similar. Uh, you will develop the main idea like you do when you're planning a written message. You will construct an outline. You will estimate the appropriate length and decide on the most effective style. Now, when you're establishing the main idea in your planning phase, you will start by focusing on the big picture. What is the main idea or theme that you want to convey to the audience? Wo akhir kya ek general idea hai, kya theme hai jo aap apne sunne walon tak pahunchana cha rahe hain. Look for a one sentence generalization that links your subject and the purpose to the audience's frame of reference. Much uh, as an advertising slogan would uh, point, uh, point out to an audience how a product is uh, useful for them. We're going to have a look at some examples of these generalized statements. If you say demand for your low calorie, high quality frozen foods will increase because of basic social and economic trends, a statement like this will alert your colleagues or the people you're presenting to, to the fact that it will be useful for them to listen to your presentation because the company is going to face some profit. There will be a higher demand for the product that they're producing. Similarly, if you say reorganizing our data processing department will lead to better service at a lower cost by giving a positive statement like this, it's a generalized statement. You are telling uh, the people who are listening to your presentation of the benefit that they and the company will have. Similarly, we should build a new plant in Texas to reduce our operating costs and to capitalize on growing demand in the Southwest. Now, each of these statements puts a particular slant on the subject, one that is positive, and directly related to the audience's interest. After this, we come to organizing the outline. With a well-crafted main idea to guide you, you can begin to outline the speech or presentation. You will gear the structure, you will think about the subject, the purpose, the audience, and the time allotted for your speech or presentation. If, for example, you have 10 minutes or less to deliver your message, you will organize your thoughts as you would in a brief memo or letter. You will use a direct approach if the subject info involves routine information or good news and use, the dire uh, use an indirect approach if it involves bad news or persuasion. Longer speeches, however, are organized like reports. Just like we have said, the short speeches are short presentations which are less than 10 minutes or less than 10 minutes are a letter or brief memo ki organized and they will आप डायरेक्ट और इनडायरेक्ट जो अप्रोच है उस हिसाब से ही यूज करेंगे अगर एक लंबी स्पीच है तो उसकी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एक रिपोर्ट की ऑर्गेनाइजेशन की तरह होगी इफ द पर्पस इज टू एंटरटेन मोटिवेट और इनफॉर्म देन यू विल यूज अ डायरेक्ट ऑर्डर व्हिच इज इंपोज्ड नेचुरली ऑन द सब्जेक्ट इफ द पर्पस इज टू एनालाइज परसुएड और कोलैबोरेट देन यू विल ऑर्गेनाइज योर मटेरियल अराउंड कंक्लूजंस एंड रिकमेंडेशंस और अराउंड अ लॉजिकल आर्गुमेंट you will use direct order if the audience is receptive and you will use an indirect order if you uh, feel that the audience will not be receptive to what you are saying, if you are ex expecting some resistance to your ideas. A carefully prepared outline may be more than just the starting point for composing a speech or presentation. If you plan to deliver your presentation from notes rather than from a written text, your outline will also be your final script. तो ये नहीं है कि आपकी आउटलाइन सिर्फ एक स्टार्टिंग पॉइंट है अगर आपकी स्पीच जो है वो आपने आपको कुछ नोट्स चाहिए अपनी स्पीच में अपना आपको रिमाइंड कराने के लिए कि आपने क्या कहना है तो आपकी आउटलाइन वो नोट्स भी बन सकती है आपका एक फाइनल स्क्रिप्ट के तौर पे वो इस्तेमाल की जा सकती है